really key is working both with the public and the private sector. So in the public sphere, it's a lot about encouraging more fair distribution of uh, domestic responsibilities between men and men through, for example, provision of childcare, um, but also uh, better provision of uh, social security to women workers and services. Uh, in the private sector, it's a lot about changing organization culture and improving uh, the conditions and quality of jobs that are provided to women. Um, and I think a voluntary codes of conduct such as the UN Global Compact, women's economic empowerment principles, for example, can be particularly successful in this. about working with the private sector so um, often women can't access more senior positions because of the work-life balance involved so policies that uh, improve work-life balance for women for example teleworking or flexible working hours or uh, longer maternity leave can really uh, enable women to access positions higher up also things like training and surely HR policies um, are supportive of women progressing in their roles um, and also mentorship of younger women uh, into more senior roles in companies. So there's uh, a number of channels through uh, which greater gender equality drives uh, economic growth and competitiveness. One of the key ones is through the consumption channel. So as women have more disposable income, they can spend more in the economy, invest more in the economy. In the long term, if they have savings, again, this can contribute to economic growth. Uh, on the other side, if women have uh, equal access to educational opportunities and training, uh, they're able to uh, access higher value at uh, positions in the services sector, for example. We also know that women uh, spend a lot more of their income on the education and health of their children. So this contributes to uh, the capital and skills of future generations um, and uh, can ensure that there is a more developed workforce um, there for the services sector to be competitive. mainstreaming gender and trade policies, we can actively ensure that trade expansion helps narrow the gender gap uh, in economies. Um, so uh, when mainstreaming gender and trade policies, it's important to look at uh, the command of resources within the economy, uh, how is women's access different from men and how might they be uh, able to benefit from the opportunities uh, created by trade and what support mechanisms are required to be there for them to be able to benefit from trade expansion. Uh, likewise, if women are likely to be more hurt by trade-related adjustment, it's important to ensure there is uh, support services and social security in place uh, to um, mitigate uh, those adjustment costs for women.